friends, greetings. Grace and peace be with you. I'm Paul Stevens. I'm the ordained minister in placement at St Luke's Uniting Church in Highton. It's good that you could share with us this week. And a particular welcome to the members of the Belmont Uniting Church congregation who will be sharing with us this week and next week as the Rev Reverend Aikani Vatoi, the minister at Belmont, enjoys a couple of weeks of, a, of deserved leave. Our focus this week will be reflecting on the experience of refugees, asylum seekers, displaced persons, migrants, those who have left their places of birth and set out on journeys to new lands. As part of the service, we'll be hearing the story of one family and the, the experience of that family as it's journeyed from the Middle East to Australia. Loving God, who has revealed your true self in the person of Jesus, with open arms, you welcome all who call on your name. No one is beyond the circle of your mercy and love. Wherever we are and whatever we are doing as we share in this service, through the power of your Holy Spirit, open our hearts to recognize your presence open our minds to receive your word for us today and open our mouths to speak and sing your praise. Help us now as we pause in prayer to be honest about ourselves and the things about ourselves that need healing, that need transforming. For we confess to you that we do sometimes find it hard to love you with our whole heart. And as we think of the needs of refugees and asylum seekers today, we know we have not loved our neighbors or, or even ourselves with kind of love we see in Jesus. Help us accept your welcome of us your valuing of each of us, however we are, your readiness to forgive us even before we ask, and then we wake up to the reality that we are a genuinely forgiven people through the love of Christ. May we never hold back from offering that love and life to others. In Christ's name, Amen. People journeying to a new land or a new place is a constant theme within the scriptures. Way back in uh, Genesis, Abraham is called by God to set out on a journey from his father's house and home to a new land. We read, of course, in the Old Testament about how Ruth travels from her homeland of Moab with her mother-in-law Naomi to, her, to Naomi's homeland of Israel. And then, of course, we know that wonderful story of the Exodus. Having heard the cry of the oppressed people of Israel in slavery in Egypt, God calls Moses to lead the people to the promised land. And then centuries after the Exodus, many of the leaders of the people of the kingdom of Judah are dragged into exile in Babylon, only being able to return after some 55 years. And then if we move to the New Testament, according to Matthew, Mary, Joseph and the infant Jesus become refugees in Egypt, fleeing the murderous tyrant Herod and his thugs. Listen now for God's word to us from three short passages of scripture, which guide our response to those who are displaced, those who are seeking sanctuary. Readings. A reading from the Old Testament book of Leviticus 19, 33-34. When an alien resides with you in your land, you shall not oppress the alien. The alien who resides with you shall be to you as a citizen among you. You shall love the aliens as yourself. For you were aliens in the land of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. A reading from prophet Isaiah chapter 25 verse 4, which describes God's response to those seeking refuge. 
For you have been a refuge to the poor, a refuge to the needy in their distress, a shelter from the rainstorm and, the, uh, and a shade from the heat. A reading from the Gospel of Matthew, of Matthew chapter 25, verse 35. Words of Jesus, a section of passage considering the judgment of the nations. I was hungry and you give me food. I was thirsty and you give me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. Matthew 25, 35. I was fascinated to hear that reading from the book of Leviticus, a book I must confess that is not high on my list of favourite books of the Bible, full as it is of uh, many complex laws. But the command in the short passage we heard is so pointed and powerful. God cared for the people of Israel when they were aliens, strangers, oppressed in Egypt. As a result, they then are to care for the strangers in their midst. Indeed, the Old Testament prophets kept reminding the people of Israel that one of the measures of how they were going in terms of living the way of God was how they cared for the most vulnerable amongst them, how they cared for the widows, the orphans and the strangers. And then we heard those words of Jesus from Matthew's Gospel reminding us that we are to see in each and every other person, the person of Jesus himself. In caring for another, we are indeed caring for Jesus. We live now in an era where the number of people fleeing from their homelands, who are refugees of some sort or other, is counted in the tens of millions. These numbers are overwhelming. And it is hard for us to work out how to respond to such harrowing statistics. But we can make a difference to the lives of the newcomers in our midst right here in Geelong. We can do all we can do to welcome them, to support them, to advocate on their behalf, to, uh, to be those who seek changes to unjust laws. We can pray for them and we can pray with them. Sue Anderson now will lead us in a session, a segment of this video where we'll hear the story of one refugee family. This morning we are privileged to hear a little of Shogig's story. Shogig identifies herself as Armenian from her descendants. She was, however, born in Syria. Now, if you're like me, I have heard of Armenia, but I didn't know a lot about it. So the Kingdom of Armenia was the first state to adopt Christianity as its official religion in the early 4th century. Armenia recognises the Armenian Apostolic Church, the world's oldest national church, as the country's primary religious establishment. The Armenian people have suffered greatly over many hundreds of years. In relatively recent times, the genocide by the Ottoman Turkish Empire in 1915 saw the slaughter of approximately one and a half million Armenian citizens. This, of course, was at the same time as many Anzacs died at Gallipoli. Then came a short reprieve of two years in 1918 when the country gained independence. This was then overturned by the Soviet Union. Finally, in 1991, Armenia gained independence again from the Soviet Union. Armenia is a landlocked country bordering Turkey on its east and is quite poor. The population of three million or so people is made up of many of the descendants of the survivors of the genocide. And as Christians, we know of Mount Ararat as the resting place of Noah's Ark. Mount Ararat is situated near the border of Armenia and Turkey. To Armenians, it is a principal national symbol and has been considered a sacred mountain. The 21st century sees Armenia continue to face many hardships. When the war began in Syria, Shagik and her family moved to Lebanon to be safer. 
Unfortunately, the Lebanese government imposed many rules on them, which restricted life even further. Welcome to St Luke's Shagig, and thank you for agreeing to speak to us about your journey to Australia. Why did you come to Australia after living in Lebanon? Um, because uh, we thought that we don't have future in Lebanon, uh, especially after we heard that Lebanese government making rules for Syrian people, like uh, we need a Lebanese sponsor to stay in Lebanon, and uh, we don't get paid like Lebanese workers and uh, many of difficulties like you find difficult to find the rental house and uh, many more things uh, that's why we decided to migrate to Australia um, how long did it take from the time you applied to when you actually arrived in Victoria uh, it takes nearly 10 months uh, we applied after a couple of months later, we received a call from the Australian Embassy in Lebanon. Uh, they invite us for interview. We went to interview and we asked there uh, how long it will take us to go to Australia. So I enroll my son to school or not, what we do. Uh, then they told us nearly approximately three months later, you will be in Australia. Right. And the other thing was your, you, not only your, your immediate family, but your brothers and sisters and your mum also applied. Yes, we all applied together, but uh, their application rejected. And then I asked the uh, embassy in Lebanon, I said, I don't have anyone in there, so if I go to there, what I will do? My mom and brother and sister rejected. They told me, if you go to there, to Australia, you can apply for them. So after I come to Australia, after three months, I applied for them. And it took nearly two years them to arrive to Australia. Now they are in here. Which is wonderful. Yes. What was your first impression of Australia after that long flight and trip down the highway to Geelong? Uh, first impression wasn't very good. We arrived at night time. Uh, there was no one in the streets, no shops. We don't know anyone. Um, the woman took us to a home. She told us that we will stay in this home. Uh, maybe two days or three days later, the case manager will arrive and he will explain us everything we need to do. And she gave us uh, food to, uh, it was enough for a couple of days. And it was, was very hard that time because uh, we feel strange. We don't know anyone. And new house, new place, dark. Uh, but when I wake up in the morning, when I see that uh, uh, backyard and uh, was the house very nice, uh, we feel better in the morning when we wake up, but in the evening wasn't very good. No, I, I, I find, I don't think, I don't know how I would feel. I'm sure none of us knows how, how we would feel. Can you explain some of the challenges you've encountered since being here? Uh, first challenge was finding a house um, because we applying many houses and we get rejected from all of them. Then uh, we have a friend in Melbourne. Uh, she was my um, uh, classmate mm -hmm. and she married uh, maybe 10, 15 years ago to an Australian Armenian man and he, her husband helped us to uh, speak with an agent. Uh, he explained our situation and he told that uh, we are a good family and we will not do anything wrong in the house and he spoke with the agent. After that we get accepted but it was hard for us at the first. Uh, Every house they are rejecting us, uh, but later when we approved, we get happy and 
we feel more settled right. in that time. Yes. Any other challenges that you can think of? Um, the language. Um, I understand English, I know, but still, when you go somewhere, when they speak very quickly, um, I don't understand every single word. Uh, it is hard for me uh, to imagine what this word it means or uh, think what, what they mean by saying this. I say, please, can you reply it again? And or can you talk slowly? Um, but later, day by day, it became easier to cope with the language and other difficulties. Yes, and I'm sure there are many other challenges that you've had. Yes. After three and a half years, what are the things that you like about Australia? Uh, the nature yes. is very nice. The green, everywhere green. Uh, the beach is close. Um, the parks for children, the health system, the schools, everything is good in Australia, actually. Uh, after three and a half years, I find everything is beautiful. Um, many helpful people. Um, a school, my son's school, helped us in many ways for settle my son in the school. Everything is better now. Good, but you still miss your of home. Of course, I miss my home country. I miss the crowded streets in there. I miss my neighbors, my school, my friends, everything. My relatives, I miss everyone. Yes, yeah. very difficult thing to do. So what are your hopes for the future, for you and for your family? Um, I hope to find a good job and then own a house, maybe, in future. Um, nothing else for now, but uh, owning a good house will make you settle more, I yes. think. Yes. And of course you had a, have an added incentive. You have a little one-year-old Aussie called <laughs> Stephen. Yes, so that he, is lovely. he was a surprise baby. <laughs> 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 that is wonderful. As yeah. I mentioned previously, we've only heard a small part of Shogig's story this morning. There's so much more to hear and to learn and to understand about, about a refugee's journey. As we reflect and think also of other newcomers' journeys that we may have been privy to, we do know intimately of another family who sought refuge. That first Christmas saw a new baby born to a mother and father who were in a lot of trouble. No money, no place to go, no doctor, nobody they knew. A fiercely political environment through which they wandered. These stories and the many others told throughout the world should open our eyes and our hearts to those most vulnerable in our midst. For millions of people from that manger land whose only hope for refuge from terror and oppression has been to travel by foot and inflatable raft for days in search of a livable life, or for those who were lucky, like Shagi's family, to be selected by our government and others, many look very much like the Middle Eastern Mary and Joseph, Jesus' parents. Thank you, Shoghi, and God bless you and your family. Thank you for having me. Thank A you. pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. Let's move now to a time of prayer, our prayers of intercession. Let's pray. Compassionate and welcoming God, in you we take refuge. Hear the prayers of our hearts and through your spirit enable us to be part of the answer to our prayers. Preserve those whose life is threatened by enemies and who are the target of bitter words or evil schemes. Remember those who are vulnerable and exposed, those who are victims of natural disaster, war and persecution, those impacted by COVID-19, those suffering anguish and sorrow. Give shelter to those seeking a safe place to those torn from their homes, 
to those who are separated from loved ones, to those who are lost or who have run away. You look with mercy and love on all who are forced to flee. Help us to welcome the stranger, befriend the lonely and show compassion. Show us how to support those who, as asylum seekers, do not know what their future holds for them. Bring healing to those who are part of our communities and congregations, who are ill, who are isolated, who are grieving, who are facing difficult decisions, who are carrying heavy burdens. May your spirit move in us and empower us to seek justice, to love mercy and to walk humbly with you, telling of all your works. Let us rejoice and give praise. In you we take refuge. In the name of Christ. Amen. Hair mir, vor her ginesses, sur pieriti anunco, ye gesse arcaitunco, ye ritin gamco, vor bes her ginesse hergri, zhats mir hana bazort, dur mezaisor, tog meses bardis mir, vor bes ye make togunk mirots bardavanats, ye vnidan irismes i portutun, ay pergia i charen. Zikoye arkayetyun yev zorutyun yev park havidyanas amen. Friends, this week, as we say each week, take care, keep safe, and perhaps make the effort this week to say good day to a stranger. And may the grace of Christ attend you, the love of God surround you, and the Holy Spirit keep you this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you.